Good morning, everybody. I have another cooking video for you today. This is another slow cooker video, and this is going to be a tamale. Um, I forgot what she called it, y'all, and I did not write it down. It's going to be a tamale you're going to put into your slow cooker. Then you're going to put a topping on it, which is the Jiffy corn mix and the two eggs. So I'm going to go through the whole thing. I forgot to pull my ground beef out and thought you can see right here. It's quite frozen, but these are the other things you need. You need a little bit of cumin. This is so simple to me as far as uh, ingredients. The, some salt, some pepper, some cumin, that's just a little bit of those. You need some a whole corn or some corn, just regular corn. I actually, y'all, I had to get into my extra pantry. I thought it was out of corn. I used to be a huge prepper type person and I'm falling behind on my prepping, which is fine, but I still had it, but I was like, oh my gosh, I can't make this recipe without this corn. And then some black beans, um, some Rotel, and some green chili. This was the actual one that she used. She said she likes this brand, the green, green chili enchilada sauce. So it's not focusing that great. It's very bright in here. I don't know why it's not focusing, but there you go. That's maybe better. So these are the only things you need. You just need the two eggs. We're gonna do that Jiffy corn mix and the two eggs toward the end. The cheese back there is gonna go on at the very end. But so these are going to be the first things that I need. So the first thing I'm going to do is thaw my ground beef in the microwave. And then I'm going to go ahead and cook it, um, brown it, and then we'll be ready to start. So thanks for being here with me. Sorry, I'm unorganized and I don't even know what this thing is called. I just remember it being a tamale. Tamale pie, I think is what she called it. But I'll, I'll get back to, with you on that. So stay tuned and we're going to get this together as soon as I get myself together. Okay guys, so I mixed together my, I mean I cooked the ground beef. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. I cooked the ground beef, I drained it. Now, she said to go ahead and put the mixture, this is the, the cumin, uh, hang on, it's, let's see. Ah, I love when I'm trying to do stuff on camera. I've got this thing flipped around wrong, that's why I'm searching for the camera. Okay, one half teaspoon salt, one four teaspoon pepper, and I actually went ahead and used a half a teaspoon because I like pepper quite a bit. One teaspoon cumin, so that's what this is. And she said just put it on top of the beef and stir it around. So the beef's over here, I think you can still see it, uh, hopefully. And I'm going to just put that on, stir it around. And of course, I've already drained everything off of here. The spices are sticking to the bottom. Maybe I should have stirred it around inside. I didn't know what she said, but they're sticking to my... I'm about to get a new one of these. Um, my birthday is coming up. In fact, my birthday's tomorrow. I haven't ordered this yet, but I'm getting a stainless steel electric skillet because I really like an electric skillet. Okay, I think that's, that's good enough as far as stirring it together. Now, you... Let's see. She sprays hers. Now, look, when I sprayed mine last week, um, there was still stuff stuck to it, so I don't normally do that. I'm just doing what she says. Um, I, it was still just as stuck on as usual. Let me see if I can pour this in. Hang on, there's, there's like a cabinet in my way here. Let's see if I can pour without spilling. Whoops, there goes some. All right, so you drain the corn. Here is my corn. Now, I usually use organic. This is, I didn't have any, so this is what I have. I, I use this too, but I like the organic from the Great Value is what I really prefer, but this is fine. So, I've drained the corn, and now I'm going to pour it in. This is where it gets super simple. It wasn't difficult before, but this is even easier. Okay, I, the black beans, I drained and rinsed the black beans. Now, I can't get the top off. All right, so they're drained and rinsed. Pour that on. All right, the enchilada sauce. I'm not sure I've ever had this green enchilada sauce, but if you have not had it, well, let's see if I can show you kind of, that's what it looks like. So I'm gonna pour that on. And then you want your Rotel. Now, if you don't have Rotel and you just, you know, you can just use the, it's tomatoes with the green chili. So sometimes you'll have the, green chili can with, and then the, the um, diced tomato can. And uh, you know, if you didn't have the green chilies and all you had was diced tomatoes, you could do that. But I did buy Rotel just, just for this. I mean, I have some, but I've been storing up less stuff. So I think I only had like two cans of Rotel. So I'm just buying a little at a time. I'm not storing up tons of food like I used to. 
Probably there will be some big food shortage and I'll be sorry, but. Okay, let's see, where was I, Rotel? Now, she put in two chopped green onions. I do not, I can't eat onions at all. And then she also put cilantro. She said that was, that was optional. And I wasn't sure Spencer liked cilantro, so I didn't do cilantro. Then she says to stir it, then put the top on and start it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stir it good. I'll show you, I know you can't really see. I, I usually have this propped on more boxes than I do today. I, I don't know where my other box went. So I'll just hold this up and show you what it looks like when you stir it together. So it looks like that, it smells good. Now, we're gonna do cook this for, she says six to eight hours, it's 10 a.m. I'm gonna cook this till four, and then I'm gonna move on to the next step because I'm gonna have to have this done. Spencer gets home about 5.20, so I don't have all day. So, and I got <laughs> I got a slow start, y'all, because I didn't, wasn't even thinking about my beef. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put that on low, six to eight hours, and I'll be back um, for the next step, which will be, at 4 p.m. and that's when we do the jiffy mix with the two eggs so this is the only thing you're going to need for the next step and then the very last step is the shredded cheese so and she used the mexican type so of course you could use whatever made you happy i, I really think cheddar taste has a better taste to it but shredded fiesta is what we have so that's what we'll be using but you'll need this jiffy mix and two eggs so that'll be our next step and that one takes about an hour you just mix the the jiffy and the two eggs and you put it on top of this and or you mix it together it's real sticky you put it on top of this and let it cook for another hour and then you turn this off and then you put the cheese on you know put the top back on so you'll it'll be turned off but the cheese will be melting and then you'll be finished so that's gonna be the next step and I'll see you back here at 4 p.m. Okay guys, here's the Jiffy Mix and I mixed it with the two eggs just like she said. It is very sticky and then she said just to carefully put it on top. I'm gonna try to put my glove on and show you uh, what it looks like, uh, what this looks like. If I can... There we go, that looks yummy, doesn't it? So it's still cooking, it's around, it's almost four o'clock now. I went ahead and started this a little bit earlier than, um, well, by the time I started together it was almost four. So I'm gonna put this on the top carefully, like she said, and then it will cook for another hour. So at five o'clock, then I'll put the cheese on. I think you turn it off at that point. Put the cheese on, let the cheese melt. It, everything, she did say check, a, check the Jiffy mix with a toothpick to make sure it was ready. Uh, and then other than that, you'll be ready to eat. So that's what I'm going to do. Be back with you. I'll be back with you in about an hour and we'll just see how it's going. And here it is right after I put the cornmeal mix. It's a little blurry, sorry about that. But that's what it looks like with the cornmeal mix on there. And now I'm gonna put the top back on and be back with you in just a little while, about an hour. Okay guys, it's about 5.15. I've just finished with um, this recipe. I put the toothpick into the Jiffy Mix, you know, the mixture with the eggs, just like Six Sisters, Kristen from Six Sisters said to, I don't know if I ever mentioned this where I got this was from Kristen at Six Sisters Stuff. It was the same video where she did the one that I did from about a week ago, which was the, the loaded potato and chicken casserole that was in the slow cooker. So it was the same video. But anyway, this was Kristen's video. It was tamale pie. It smells a lot like chili, if you're just kind of curious. It has a lot of things in it that chili would have. It's, you know, sometimes you'll have corn in your chili and you'll have some diced tomatoes and you'll have the beef and uh, the beans and that kind of thing. So it smells a lot like chili, but it, um, and then it has that Jiffy Mix on top. The Jiffy Mix was done. I just put the toothpick in. Most of it, it pulled out like it was supposed to. There was like one little area, but I went ahead and turned it off put the shredded cheese on. I just covered the top. I don't remember if she said exactly how much, so I just covered the top. And then she said, you. I think she said you could just go ahead and turn it off at that point. So I turned it off, put the cheese on, and now I'm just letting it sit there. And my husband's on his way home. So hopefully it's gonna be yummy. Thanks so much for joining me this time. I really appreciate you guys being here and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. And here's the finished product. I just wanna show you really quick. I had put the top back on, I had turned it off, and the cheese did go ahead and melt. It's a little fuzzy, but that is cheese on top. 
Hello guys, we're getting a hard freeze tonight. I, it's, it's, we're under a freeze warning, so I think they're saying 29. Um, if it was only one night, everything would probably be okay. This is my um, flowering almond. Isn't it beautiful? One year I thought I was going to lose it completely, so the fact that it's this beautiful. And there's Mr. Jasper. Hey Jasper, what's up? Um, now this is a spirea. Um, this one blooms later than the other one. I've shown pictures of the other one, but you can see this one's about to burst into bloom. How nice is that? Um, not good timing. So, I don't know. It may be okay. Uh, I used to cover my plants, but everything's so big now. I just, you know, I've just kind of moved on from it. I could probably throw a sheet over that, and I may do that, actually, because I do have a lot of sheets. That's one thing I did not get rid of was my sheets. Oh, look at this. So, this is, sorry, the church bells are going. It's on the hour. And I hear a siren coming too. So this is a columbine. It's just started blooming. I asked Spencer yesterday, do you think the hummingbirds are here? We have not been putting the food out, but, and of course now it's gonna freeze. So I'm gonna have to wait a couple days, but yeah, I'm gonna have, and we have lots of foliage and not that many daffodils. It's a little crazy and they're all kind of bent over. We've had a lot of rain. But anyway, the columbine, when the columbine blooms and also our, um, I'm gonna show you the zellias. They're not doing much yet, but I'll show them to you. But once the, the columbine goes, usually that means we have hummers. So, okay, so here's the spirea. This is, I think this one's the bridal wreath. It has little tiny blooms. Let's see if I can get up close here. So this is starting to fade out anyway. And a lot of times you'll get a freeze and the spirea will do fine. So maybe that I don't really need to worry about it too much. But the fact, this one's, like I said, it's about played out, but the other one isn't. It hadn't even started, so I don't know. So I had a guy come, I don't know if you see this, this ground cover. My mother gave me this ground cover. This is a nightmare. You see how it's just everywhere? Um, ground cover is okay, but when it gets like this, it's, it's like awful. But I had a guy <laughs> pull it out for me. Of course, as you can see, it's still here. It's, it came back. It actually, it's, it's less than it was. But this right here, I used to have a million of these, and when he pulled this stuff out, he moved all these around just the way he was digging, I guess. This is called Solomon Seal. Is that not beautiful? So I used to have a million of them, and they were just like really tight together. And then this stuff started infiltrating, and now I have several Solomon Seal, but they're coming up all over the place. So he actually, he did me a favor. So instead of all tightly knit together, they're just like all over the place now so I'm, I'm loving that they weren't coming up and I was I was like oh my gosh am I not gonna have okay y'all I think he's hunting last night he caught a vole I mean like boom he was just sitting out here and boom he went into a bunch of foliage came out with a vole <laughs> and ate it yes gross oh and then threw up overnight I, I think he threw up it was either him or Sonny I think it was him okay let's go around to where the I've got to get my azaleas I want to get a photo, I mean, a, a video of the azaleas. So, I will just tip tuck at tulips here. Oh, honey tulips. That's a lie. But, um, hang on, I'm stuck. Okay, I think this is, like, really pretty. Let's see. Yeah, that's kind of like a, hang on, I'm sorry. I tried to, oh. <laughs> I tried to get a, kind of a view. Because a lot of mine have little orange faces. See the little orange faces? But that's actually a yellow one, so... Now, I'm going to show you something very ugly. This thing normally keeps its leaves the whole winter. I mean, it's, it's beautiful all winter. Look what that horrible cold snap has done to it. And it's not doing anything yet. I mean, I really thought by now it would be doing something. But I don't, I mean, I don't think it's dead because it's green, but a little disappointing. I've got a hostage coming up right here. And then... I think these azaleas are, they don't look like they're doing much. Um, they might be dead. Uh, we'll, we'll give them some time. They've had a really, I've had a hard time with my azaleas. Um, and these don't look too good either. But they are getting some new foliage on them. But we had that horrible cold snap. Okay, here's my white azalea. So it's it's kind of hard to get to. Anyway, you can see the sunset with it. But it's, that's just my white azalea. I waited a little bit late to get out here. I hope you can hear me over those bells. The bells are beautiful, but they're a little bit noisy. So, anyway, I'm going to go around the other side. But we're really having trouble with our 
Um, okay, so this this big thing right here, can't really see it, but that's a mon orange. This is a weeping yokon right there. It's getting dark out here. Should have been out here earlier. Anyway, we'll do a garden tour one day when it's not dark. Here's a huge, I think this nest is from last year, but look how big it is. It's just monstrous. So this is my, um, okay, this is the other side of the weeping yokon. That right there. That right there is a tree, but this is, this, I guess the weeping yoke one's a tree, but it's, it's really hard to see right now. And then this is the mock orange. It will bloom at some point. But I mean, this nest is massive. I want to say brown thrashers were in there last year. So I don't know if they'll reuse it. We just leave it alone. They do whatever they do. Okay, this is starting to bloom. I think you can see right here somewhere. I can see it. I don't know if you can see it or not somewhere okay i think you can maybe see some little buds right there maybe it's hard to see but yeah i thought that was going to start blooming everything is really damaged by that cold snap so these are my other azaleas and they're just they don't look like they're doing much i don't know that they're going to bloom maybe a little or maybe really late because really they should be blooming by now i think i think everything's just kind of late but our purple martins are here and they got they actually got here early so the whole thing's weird there's the white one i think you can definitely still see it so there's the white one it is very tall i used to have a whole bunch of them a bunch of different colors and just everything has gone wrong with my azaleas so they're just not as pretty as they used to be but i've learned over the years not to sweat this stuff just you know whatever happens happens if you got to pull something out you got to pull it out you just move on plant something else that's going to be a, a pretty pink I think this is the one my mom gave me that's usually just drop dead gorgeous and you can see it was just so damaged but you know it'll come back it's not dead it just may not do a lot this year which you know is sad but that's what gardening is all about i tell people there's really i mean people argue with me but there's really no such thing as a in my opinion there's no such thing as a green um thumb it's all about trial and error everything is about trial and error and just because it works in your neighbor's yard doesn't mean it's going to work in your yard. They could be right next to you. And <laughs> it's the ranger's rear end. He's about to bark at something. But, um, you know, it could work next door to you and not work in your yard. Because your yard could be like a micro. I can't remember what they call it. A micro environment or something like that. They have a name for it. I wonder what is going on over here with all these. Look at all these. see those flashing lights? Uh, something crazy going on down there. I'm going to ask my friend because she lives across from there. Anyway, I guess the Purple Martins went to bed. They're, they're super fun. Yeah, so this is the back side of that thing that I said stays green all year long, typically. But we had that negative 18 wind chill. And so the temperatures were, I guess, less than zero. Can't really remember now what they were, but it was horrible. And even today, today it's it was like 45 and it was really, really windy and cold. It's like, I need gloves on right now. It's that cold out here. It's, it feels like a really frigid, like we've had an Arctic something come through. Uh-oh, this thing is, oh my gosh, what is happening? Ah, okay. I don't want to get in the middle of this. Some sort of thorny thing. I don't want that on my brand new coat on. I don't want that on. Now, somehow my nice rose bush, I think I need to trim some of the back, but my nice rose bush is coming back. This thing, I left it out in this pot all winter, so when that cold snap came through, I was like, oh no, I really screwed up. This thing has been in this pot forever, and it blooms yellow, and it's gorgeous, but you can see there's like a lot of dead right there. So yeah, I'm gonna have to cut some of this back, but I mean, the fact that it's alive is a miracle. And these are oak leaf hydrangeas. I'm surprised they look this good. We'll just, we'll just see how it goes. You know, like I said, trial and error, trial and error. We'll see. Stranger back there with all the little crosses. We've had a lot of little, little cat and dog deaths. And, you know, we've lived here. What? This is our 29th year of living here. So we've had a lot of pet deaths. But, but we have a nice little cemetery back there. Very sweet. Stranger's back there. Bark, bark, barking at the neighbor's dogs. All right. Well, I've talked your ear off. I'll I'm not sure what I'll tack this onto, but you'll see it eventually. Hey y'all, I just wanted to show you that Sunshine's ready. She's ready for me to start cooking. <laughs> I started thawing the meat and I started breaking it off. Here she is. I started breaking it off a little bit and uh, here she comes. So the, the problem of having a cat in your kitchen at all times, 
she's, because of the situation with Cricut, she's always in my kitchen. So anyway, um, it's okay. As I always tell people, we have not died yet.